Hey everyone, welcome back to the new Trust Economy. I'm Tracy Hazard and I am here with Marcus Levin. And Marcus and I met on the Larry King Now Show, which was kind of cool because I, had, I hadn't known much about his company. I mean, I had heard of it before because it was on a, the docket of an event I attended. But other than that, I hadn't gotten much experience in getting to know them. And we decided to dive deeper because we intrigued each other. So Marcus is here to talk more about what XYO is working on, and he's coming to us from South by Southwest because he's over there, because there's so much going on there. So uh, he is the co-founder and head of operations at XYO, and we'll talk a little bit about what they do here, but it's, he's originally from Germany, and you, Marcus, you have 15 years of experience in building and growing innovative companies around the globe. Like what? Like what kind of companies? Uh, any type of different Things like a lot of startup companies in the like fashion industry, e-commerce, lots of advertising technology, data, distributed computing, really along the gamut. I started out actually with old school business consulting, and then went into the fashion industry and did like supply chain management and production, those types of things, and then started to move more and more into the startup side of, of that, and then technology startups. And yeah, now I am where. Well, and I'm so excited to talk to you more about what you've built here with XYO because it's just a really, because um, it, it's application into hard good products. Obviously, hard good products are my background and experience as I've been designing and developing products for mass market for 27 years. Oh, gosh, it's a really long time. So, yeah, and, you know, and IoT, the Internet of Things, is a big, big deal in that, in that world. And everyone's adding, you know, geolocation, all kinds of things like that. But you've got something really cool. It's geospatial blockchain network and yes. it's backed with crypto crypto cryptography not cryptocurrency with cryptography which is so interesting like geospatial can you break that down a little bit for us yeah geospatial basically means inside the space uh, and time so you have xyz which is space and then you have t which is time so if you speak about iot data or, or any type of, of data uh, you, if you speak about the temperature, like it's 80 degrees here, you, you, you want to know where that is, right? You want to know, is that on the North Pole or is it in, in Austin or is it in San Diego? Right. Uh, and you want to know what time it is too, because and, that matters, right? So it, it's very relevant where the data originates from. So most data is actually geospatial because of uh, it's relevant uh, where it is. So uh, we are actually confirming location data around connected devices. And, and, and let's talk, because this is one of the things we touched on when we were on Larry King, is that you know, there's a really big importance to that being, that crypto, cryptography coming into that, to, for yeah. that being secure. And a lot of that IoT, I think that's the, the part where people freak out about it and why they, they're reluctant to hook up their devices. You know, we hear this, you know, horror stories about baby monitors being hacked and, you know, and I mentioned, I have a young daughter and, you know, the idea of her being located at her school freaks me out. So do I let her have a device? Do I let her have her wristwatch? Do I let her have her phone? Is even a question that a lot of parents ask. So we're asking these questions. And so that is an essential part that security is really important. Yeah, it's, it's a, uh incredibly important it's you can't ever say a, a device is unhackable right it's, uh, there's all these edge nodes in iot there's going to be billions and billions of devices out there and you know someone can go to the device in a remote area and, and just try to tamper with it and, and you probably would, would never know so the only way to make these types of networks more tamper proof is to use cryptography or, or math to then uh, protect and verify the data and make sure that it hasn't been tempered with. Right, and so so bringing all of those things together, you found that blockchain can really enable this. Yes, yeah, blockchains, one of its key tenants are its immutable data. Immutable means unchangeable, right? So once it's recorded and everybody agrees that this is a data set, basically you, you can't change data anymore because it gets uh, multiplied among millions and millions of databases or, or spreadsheets or blockchains. And uh, once uh, people ag agree that this is a data set, you can't come back later and, and change it. And that's particularly relevant in IoT because in IoT you have uh, millions of billions of, of devices out there and 
uh, you can't really rely that, that certain data is true. And what we are doing is we make sure, we give you a confidence score that certain data is accurate. So we can say we have 97% certainty, for example, that your daughter made it safely to school or uh, that uh, she didn't, she wasn't in an environment where it was 70 degrees or, or 60 degrees. She wasn't in the supermarket or in another place while she went on the way, on the way to school. Those types of, of things. So we can right. to verify uh, IoT data and, and give you that confidence. Right. And how is this going to rival GPS? Because you were talking a little bit about that in the show. I mean, you know, that's, we, we all under, I think most of us do understand how GPS network works. But understanding how yours works, like there's, location verifying beacons and i mean yeah. so tell us a little bit about the differences between the two yeah so gps is incredible because it's it's, it's very accurate so you can basically anywhere on the globe uh, if you're not underground and if you're not where skyscrapers are and if there's no spoofing devices around you you can uh, get a, a gps signal within if you're in the military within a few millimeters or centimeters if you're a civilian within a few feet or, or meters and uh, it, our technology but the problem with gps is easily spoofed or hacked so you can download the gps spoofing app and then within two minutes you can pretend that you're in tokyo and that's relevant uh, uh, maybe not so much for like pokemon go and other ar enabled games or things but if you speak about trucker brakes or smart cities or autonomous cars or AI, drones, robots, those types of things, right? It's important that you have location data you can rely on. Our technology uses IoT devices and mobile phones and basically anything which is connected to where those devices verify each other's proximity to each other. It's like us two taking a selfie together, we print out two copies, we put our signatures in there. When we leave each other, we can prove that we were close to each other. And if you have a lot of those interactions between a lot of devices, you basically create a relative map of those devices. And uh, then those devices, so if, if you say an hour after we saw each other, you say, oh, I'm Tokyo, in Tokyo now, and you, know, you, you basically lie about your location, uh, your data becomes improbable and your reputation goes down. And we can then uh, say, okay, you notice it's not reliable in our network, and so it doesn't have certainty around its location. So, Interesting. So, so we're 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 relying on our devices to report back to and and verify all kinds of information. So that's such an interesting idea. So it really is a collaborative look rather than a GPS pinpoint. Exactly. Yeah. One of our first models was we as a people powered GPS. We have moved on since then, but that's exactly what it is, right? It's, uh, you decide uh, to be part of, of that network and, and you power it yourself. And uh, on, you earn XYO, our cryptocurrency, as you provide uh, data which becomes part of, of answers. Uh, but also applications are, are going to be built on top of that. You know, if you look at GPS, when GPS came out for, for consumers, it was just relevant for navigation systems, and that was basically it. And then uh, 10 years or so, the, the smartphone revolution happened, and now every second app, it seems, on your mobile phone is location-enabled, right? If you look at Amazon or Uber or Yelp. And uh, it, so it's, we basically built a, a protocol layer on top of which other businesses can build uh, their use cases. So, so let's talk about some kinds of applications because that's what we're, I'm always interested in and it starts to make people understand, okay, so there's this robust network that you've built here. Now, how am I going to use it? Like, how is it going to change my daily life? Right. What are some examples of that? Yeah. Um, could, for example, do a payment upon delivery for e-commerce. So Amazon Prime could offer their customers that you only pay when the package is not only on your doorstep, but when it's in your living room. And it's relevant because one third of Americans reported this experience porch theft in, in 2016. And you don't know if your UPS driver scans a package but never delivered it, or if your neighbor took the package or if something else it's just random happened with it. And our technology, you can say the package was even at the manufacturer, if the manufacturer participates, but it was in the Amazon warehouse, got into the truck, all the other packages on the truck verify that the package is there, and the truck drivers 
technology in the car, like your cell phone and so on. And then when it hits your house, then your neighbor's cell phone, your XYO enabled fridge and your XYO enabled doorbell all recognize the package is there. The payment gets triggered to Amazon. And then if, if you're a fraudster and you say, oh, I don't want to pay for it, right? I, I executed chargebacks for my credit card. Amazon can say, no, we have proof that the pack, there's 98% or 99% probability that the package was delivered right here and, and the chargeback should not happen. Well, and, I'm starting to hear some things that, you know, because you and I both have a supply chain background. So, you know, it, that's where a lot of stuff happens, like along that process of like tracking the supplies, tracking whether or not, where am I actually on the water? Where am I on the water? How much longer is it going to be to pour? Like that's an anxious time for a lot of retail buyers and a lot of uh, product people. So, you know, thinking about the applications there could be huge as well. So you're talking about, you know, not just consumer use, but, but industrial use. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, we have we have partnerships actually in the on the industrial side with a container shipping company. We have some other partnerships which we haven't quite announced yet uh, on the supply chain side, and uh, we are partner of the FedEx Institute of Technology uh, in Memphis to en enable exactly this certainty-driven uh, supply chain. Imagine uh, you know you order yourself, uh, let's say, a bottle of bourbon. And you right, you want to make sure it comes from your favorite distillery in, in Kentucky. So, uh, you know, X Y O enable your your packaging box, right? And uh, we, we are working on a sticker-based design. You wrap up the sticker on there, or you put it in the packaging tape, and then uh, you can make sure that your bottle of bourbon really came from your favorite distillery and not from some moonshine distillery. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so true. So I we have I have a really good friend who I interviewed on another one of my podcasts and he was super proud and he he bought he bought this guy's a uh, t-shirt that was, you know, and he was going to wear it while I interviewed him and it was like a big big deal and he was and it was kind of one of his heroes and he he stands there and the guy goes, "You know that's a fake, right?" <laughs> and he's like he was horrified he was horrified that it was fraudulent and it didn't come from the right place at all and so because he, he thought he was buying a legitimate one it looked real yeah and yeah. so you don't know until you know that it's not coming from a real source right, <laughs> yeah, right. that's exactly right well, so and that, you, you that's really say, true oh, yeah. so so that that's you know to expand on that that that's a big problem with amazon sellers actually today right now so you know, is my, am I the verified seller of something or am I the brand of something you can, if you're authorizing brands to sell it or resellers, you can say it must come from these locations. And if it doesn't, then it's not a legitimate sale and it can be more easily shut down once it enters into the warehouse without that code on it, without that tape, as you put it, um, right. or label that, that I think is a really significant improvement in the supply chain management side of things. Thank you. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, we, you've seen a lot of fraud in fashion. <laughs> <laughs> we layer additional data on top of it. So we, we say, for example, your, your package of bourbon should have not reached a certain temperature in the delivery truck, right? So that the flavors don't break down or, or whatever the reason is. And uh, so we do uh, there like about 200 different sensors, if you like light, vibration, and all, all the other things, acceleration and so on. And uh, we can cryptographically secure all this type of data by verifying by all these IoT devices around you also verifying that something is really true. Uh, wow, that, that's incredible from a transportation side of things because if you're having lots of breakage and lots of problems and lots of liabilities and you say, wow, it's these trucks or it's this mm -hmm. part of the part of the shipping process that it's not being protected during or, you know, that that's very useful data. Right, right, you're right. Mm -hmm. Wow, wonderful. So, you know, where are you guys in the scope of building this business? So I always like to get down to the business side of building it because that's also what our listeners and partially what I'm interested in knowing too is like, how did you build this? How did it, I mean, how did you come to this and how far into it are you? We're far down, down the rabbit hole. Uh, we, we started the company in 2012. Um, and we were an IoT company in the location space. We had like key finders and GPS trackers and other type of beautiful things. We went through like different product iterations since 2012. And then in 2017, we realized because of the experience of the co-founders with other data companies and, and around other location-based advertising and so on, we realized uh, 
that the scale of this and the relevance really comes from the location data and to be able to have certainty around location data. So location was where it was a book was for Amazon. And once we had this realization, uh, we said, okay, we, we have the springboard of our own devices. And uh, why don't we start to build the XYO network? That was at the end of 2017. And then in January, we had about seven people working on that project. Uh, now it's 90. And oh my goodness, that's quite an expansion in a short period of time. Yeah, especially during the bear market. So we, we got a lot of confidence from the market. And, and we are, uh, as a business, we are, we co-founders, we sold three businesses in the last six years. So we, we had pretty large companies before. So we, uh, we know how to avoid some of the pitfalls, maybe other <laughs> blockchain companies. Into in, in the last few months, uh, you know, like diversify your revenue streams and, and uh, don't grow too fast, and all the other basics in business, but which a lot of other blockchain companies didn't have, and then that helped us, I, I think, to to build our business uh, very well. So now we we build on the next iteration of our XYO network. Um, we launched some apps. We have uh, amazing partnerships out there with thirty odd companies. Uh, and organizations and uh, things are just exploding here. We, we conquer the world right now and uh, we do actually well, well all, all around the globe. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you know, it's, you're so right though. I think that having a lot of um, broad experience in business as you approach new technology helps you to avoid a lot of the development problems. So uh, Monica Prophet, my, my co-host here, she and I do occasional episodes together and we were just talking about that realis re realistically, developing your application or developing your interface or all of those things. It's like you have to apply regular good user interface mm -hmm. rules or you have to apply regular software development rules even though you're building on the blockchain. And so that not having your scope of work outlined, not having the right team in place, not building on something stable and long term, like all of those things still really apply. And you guys have avoided those pitfalls that co commonly happen when you get excited about a new technology, right? <laughs> so you're like all in the tech and you forget about the business side of things. Yeah, you're exactly right. So on our side, uh, a lot of blockchain projects I see, it's like three engineering friends or three marketing friends, you know, like starting a project and, and they often fail just because you, you have like three of the same and they can't see the whole scope, as, as you say, right? In our case, we have uh, a, a visionary technology genius, Ari, you know, who runs on the technology side and, and Scott, he's like a marketing psychologist kind of, of brain and, and me, I, I do more the mundane business partnerships and, and all, all the other. The exactly. partnerships are really important. Don't discount that. Um, sometimes those are the accelerators without the cash flow, right? And so they actually are sometimes the most important things that we find. And so don't don't discount that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> well, I love <coughs> excuse me. I love what you're building here because it has a broader you have a uh, I'm going to say it, a technology labor that in and of itself can be applied to so many industries, which gives you those diverse revenue streams in the future and now and as you are finding with the partnerships that you're building um, but it also gives you what I, I like to call application proof so you're able to in different areas whether it's take on a small project or a bigger one you're able to get application proof relatively quickly because you've got that that breadth of of a technology layer and that that's um that's special Right. That gives you a lot of a lot of opportunities and a lot of opportunities to flex it when something doesn't go right. And things don't always go 100 percent right when you're building a new business. You know that yeah, you're you're giggling because that's like exactly reality. Right. You know, you think this industry is going to going to boom over here and then something crashes. So it's going to happen. So we talked a bit about cryptocurrency on, and there really isn't a lot of cryptocurrency built into what you're doing here with XYO, right? I mean, that's, you know, we, you, you, you have experience, you bought your first Bitcoin, it says in, two, in, in 2013, you know, that's great, that's nice and early, but it, it, this, your venture isn't really built on, it's built on blockchain. Yeah, I, I think... Uh... People often put together blockchain and, and cryptocurrency, and they actually do different things. We spoke about it on, on Larry King now. And, yeah. uh, so blockchain is basically the underlying technology layer to, to enable cryptocurrency. But we have 
a cryptocurrency layer as well because we incentivize people to earn uh, to do take certain actions and then earn xyo as a tax those actions we have four components in our network we have the sentinels which is a like location or data verification then we have the bridges which are devices which uh, relay your data which could be like your cell phone or, or anything connected to the internet basically then you have the archivists which store and process the data which could be your computer and or a server or something and then we have the diviners which are algorithms which crunch that data which you can run on like high-powered computers or, or servers or, or the more specialized machines and all those devices they earn xyo as their data becomes part of answers so we actually incentivize the spread of the network and uh, through so, so you, in a way it's more tokenization though than it is crypto because they're utilizing it within your network yeah exactly right it's yeah right. And so, so what does xyo buy them yeah uh, so xyo is like traded on cryptocurrency exchanges and so on so uh, you, so it's equity it's yeah exactly it's an asset you, you can sell it for for us dollars or euro or bitcoin or ethereum and yeah. so there you go perfect example of security tokenization i love it yeah thank you and yeah. prices they actually like if amazon comes and wants to work with us they either can pay us in us dollars let's say and we convert that to xyo and put it into the network or amazon can come and pay us in xyo it doesn't really matter to us so we want to make it frictionless for enterprises a lot of enterprises don't care much about the cryptocurrency part. What they care is about that they can hook in with an API and get all the fantastic data they need, right, to, to make their products better and as frictionless as possible. And that's what we enable on the enterprise side. And on the consumer side or on the device side, you have cryptocurrency to, to incentivize certain actions. Right, wonderful. Yeah, because you've got to get you've got to get enough people into that network who who are enrolling their devices, participating in that. Because the more there are, the richer that richer that network becomes for you. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, uh, customers in sixty plus countries uh, who bought our devices actually, and then we work on updating and upgrading existing infrastructure and devices. That's where our scale is going to come from. So you couldn't put our SDK into your mobile app and. Uh, oh. Up, we can upgrade existing mobile apps or we upgrade existing IoT devices. So any any product with a dialogue chip we can add to your firmware, for example, and in the future other chipsets as well. And then your firmware will run uh, XYL. So if you already have a parking meter out there or if your car, so whatever connected device you have, we, we can upgrade those to run on XYL. Yeah, so I've been exploring blockchain on the influencer side of things. So obviously I'm a podcaster and I run a podcast network. And so we've been exploring it on that that side of things of like really being legitimate and, and being of value to brands and advertisers and other things like that. Because there isn't a, there's a lot of bad data and there's a lot of no data, right? iTunes doesn't share the data. It tells me how many, who my listeners are. So I can't share that with an advertising network. So we, um, my partner and I invented a microphone that we're working on and it's going about to come out in the next uh, uh, two months. Um, it'll, it actually will come out in about a month onto like Indiegogo Kickstarter. And, um, and the interesting part about it that I was just thinking is like, wow, we could upgrade and put in, uh, put it and make it smart because it's for doing live interviews out in a field. And so if I, if I want to be legitimate and say, Hey, I'm really at this event today, we could have that upgraded information and broadcast that to all of our listeners, broadcast that through our video, provide something like that in the future. So, right. you know, there are other applications to why you would want to enroll your devices. And I think <coughs> that's really an interesting, I think that's really, no problem. I think that's really an interesting concept is so they're starting to think about that possibilities of the future. What would make sense? What, what devices make the most sense in the future? What's going to what's going to expand and grow and be valid, right? Like if that was, if that was really important. So, I mean, we have a lot of, um, you know, influencers claim they're in places and then they really aren't. So like, could we, you know, is that a problem? Well, it may be a problem in the beauty market, for instance, or it may be a problem in the fashion market um, where my products, I'm, I'm there, uh, you know, uh, going through the manufacturing. Right? Like I have actually a couple of coffee podcasters who do it and they go down to um, the farms. Right. Are they really there? Is this legitimately being farmed where it says it is? Can we do a whole spot there? Um, nonprofits, the same thing. Are they really in that part of the world? 
like I could definitely see that going on and, and seeing it become a part of legitimization of their locations. And so yeah. that's where we get into that geospatial. Am I really there at the exact right time? So geospatial blockchain network. I love that. Yeah, I, I think you make an excellent point there. There's just too much fraud in the, in, in the influencer side, right? It's like, because it's, it's, it's a new business. Mm -hmm. don't nobody spoke about influencers. Maybe you had like athlete sponsorships and those types of things, but there, there weren't influencers. Now, there's, there's, it's, the barriers to entry are, are just lower. So it's, it's more difficult, I think, to weed out better, better apples. But with, with this type of technology, if you can confirm someone really has knowledge and, uh, or has been at certain places and gained experiences, you would trust that person so much more. So it's, uh, we identified that just very recently as well and uh, launched a partnership with Everypedia. Uh, Larry Stanger, the co-founder of Wikipedia, and now he's... Uh, the CIO at, uh, at Everypedia. I was the same on, on Larry, and Larry King now. Uh, we do a partnership to verify that people really have been in that places and get first source knowledge. So if you are an expert on Wikipedia about, write about the Statue of Liberty uh, all day long, but never have been there, right? And with our technology, you, and then in partnership with Everypedia, you can say the photos which I took there at Liberty, it was really me who took them there like three weeks ago, which makes me a, a first source. Or if you have more recent events, let's say you have like demonstrations or riots or voting or, or, or anything, like current events, like you want to make sure that the people who report from there have really experienced. Right. And that's what I so agree. Like, I mean, we have this idea that like, oh, you can be on a green screen and report for anything. And you know what? It's really not true until you've been on the ground, as you know, in fashion world, right? If you haven't been on the ground at where something's made, you do not have firsthand knowledge of was my, was my product sustainably farmed? Was it, you know, was the cotton sustainably farmed? Was it sustainably produced? Um, did the leathers that I was using, you know, go through a chemical process? If you haven't been there, you don't know that. Um, you can say that's what the vendors tell me, but you don't know that. And so being able to follow that, I think it's really important and being able to follow people, um, you know, through the use of their devices or through however that happens. I think that's going to be really valuable as we go for a proof and trust model in the future. That's why Monica and I call this the new trust economy. <laughs> because <laughs> we have such little trust right now. So let's talk a little bit just before we go here. I want to, because it wouldn't be, um, you know, we wouldn't be talking about trust here if we said, you know, oh, this is just a great product. This is just a great company. You know, let's talk a little bit about the challenges that you're facing. So, you know, what is the challenge? Is it the biggest challenge growth? Is it, you know, blockchain? I mean, we see a lot of blockchain distrust, um, you know, uh, a lot of deniers that this is going to work as we, you know, as we got those questions from Larry King. So, you know, what do you, what are you saying? I think, uh, there was so much enthusiasm in the market at the end of 2017 and then the beginning of 2018 and, and then the market did this bear market and everything stabilized now and it looks actually it might come back up <laughs> and during that time i think there was a, a lot of people were very skeptical of, of what we did right so we said oh we we when we started we said oh we are a blockchain company then we realized a month or two in that actually now it's becoming not a good term to be a blockchain company. And then we actually realized, no, we provide solutions which are powered by blockchain. And so the powerful underlying technology is actually what, what makes our, our thing works. And, and that changed it for us. But I, I think that was the most uh, difficult thing in, in, in recent history for us. And also a lot of people don't know what we are talking about. So yeah. it's a lot of education. Right? A lot so, of education, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. you know, I think that's so true to be blockchain enabled, right? You know, looking at this is like, I, I always look at that. Is there an application? Does this application absolutely require blockchain or not? I think is an important question to ask yourself when you're building a company or when you're taking something in or partnering with a company like yours. It's like, is it required to? And in a way, yours is because it requires the, the geospatial verification. And that really can't come without proof all along the way. And in a way, king, like we talk about in blockchain, right? right? So that king is important. And, um, but, you know, it is always a good question to be asking is, is that the predominant thing? Well, no, at the end of the day, the value isn't in how you're doing it. The value is in what you're providing. And that is geospatial verification. Absolutely right. 
I totally agree. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Marcus, I'm so glad you came on the show and I'm so glad we got to dive a little bit deeper and you're just down in San Diego. So I'm going to have to come by seeing you guys are expanding yeah. so quickly. You have to come down and see this 90 employees. Whoa. Is that worldwide though? Yeah, it's worldwide, but we have 85 of them in San Diego. Oh, wow. So you're really building a big company down there. So I'm going to have to come check you out next time yeah. I'm down there. So that would be a lot of fun. So I look forward to that. And then I'll be happy to report on that afterwards as well. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. So, you're welcome. So listeners, New Trust Economy, listeners, viewers, readers, whatever you are out there, New Trust Economy is looking to bring you more application stories, more companies that are building on the blockchain, um, utilizing cryptocurrencies or tokenization and all of those things, because we want you to really understand that there are valid ideas out there, just like XIO is really working towards, and that those are business ideas that those are opportunities, those are consumer ideas in some cases or industrial ones as well. But whatever that is, that's what we're looking. We're not here to talk about what's hot in cryptocurrency. We're not here about what's not. And so we're not here just to be a skeptic. We're here to explore the opportunities that are going on and whether there are viable businesses and application stories. So as always, we brought you on here today. Um, it will be in the blog post at newtrusteconomy.com. So if you want any links, you want to find Marcus, you want to find the business, you want to learn more about XYO, it'll all be there for you. So thanks again for listening. And we'll be back again with a new episode of New Trust Economy real soon. Thank you.